Right. On the heels of today's jobs number, the Dow is still just shy of 20,000 right now. For more on this and what it may mean for the market and especially the economy, let's send it out to uh, Chicago. Steve Leisman is sitting down exclusively with Chicago Fed President Charles Evans. Stephen, take it away. Yeah, Bill, what a time to have Charles Evans here, the Chicago Fed President. New voter this year. You think uh, it might be because you're a voter this year that we're up near these, uh, these lofty <laughs> levels? <laughs> Well, you know, things look pretty good for 2017, so, you know. Let's get back to that in a second, but just tell me how you react when you look at a number like this, 19,979. Does it make you nervous as a policymaker? Well, the stock market's been improving. Uh, it's continued to grow. Uh, it's grown after the election. Um, you know, fundamentals for 2017 look pretty good, and uh, businesses are, you know, generally hopeful for, you know, next year and a change in policy, so it, it makes sense. The the Fed in its minutes of December said one of the risks for next year was that the market doesn't get as much policy or policy support as maybe it's banking on. Is that a concern that you have? Well, I think, uh, you know, putting our forecast together last time, one thing that you had to take note of was the fact that long-term interest rates had gone up, gone up noticeably. Sure. And, you know, that was a surprise relative to expectations before the election. So you had to make an assumption about that. And we were in the camp where you made a little bit of an assumption about fiscal policy being more expansionary in 2017, whether it comes from a change in taxes or uh, infrastructure spending and, and whatnot. But I think everybody's waiting to see details, what actually will be uh, you know, uh, proposed, adopted, executed, and we'll just have to see how that plays out. So, I mean, it could be more or less than people have currently put into their projections. Businesses, I mean- Tell us how that works relative to policy. If there's more fiscal policy, does that mean more rate hikes from the Fed? Uh, you know, I think we have to be paying attention to how the economy is performing. And so the labor market's been very strong. Uh, we're, I am looking for inflation to begin to increase a little more noticeably, but I've still been disappointed that it's been taking so long to get it up to 2%. So, you know, that, those are, you know, our goals, and it's very important that we get there. Now, more expansionary fiscal policies would boost that. I think inflation will come a little bit later, given the lags in uh, monetary policy and all of that. But we'll have to be making assessments of how much, how large the multipliers are and how it's being taken on board by the public. Tell us, Charlie, where you are in the spectrum of two or three rate hikes. And I know it doesn't matter a whole lot, but just in terms of the ballpark of how many rate hikes you could really foresee for, for this year. So I've said for you know some time, I'm still nervous that we've been underrunning our inflation objective for so long, going back to almost 2009. Um, I see the table being set for better performance and uh, better inflation performance 2017 and beyond. So um, I've got an outlook and I'm you know, a little cautious and probably only have two rate increases penciled in for next year. But if the outlook solidifies, if we actually get that, if risk management concerns are less important as we move further away from zero lower bound risk, then yeah, three three rate hikes could make sense. Uh, what about those risks for next year? I mean, you said 2007 for this year. 17 looks like a good year for you. Trade barriers, foreign growth. What what kind of risks are you really concerned about right now? So it's too early to say, right? I mean, uh, you know, nothing's been written down. A lot has been said. Uh, we don't know who all the advisors are. Who's going to be the big, you know, in the administration? How things are going to play out, and then how Congress uh, takes all of that on board. So you know, I'm just uh, expecting to listen to how this plays out and work and with my policy. staff a lot to yeah. figure out what the implications might be because okay. things like trade and all of that, very difficult to, to assess timing right. Um, right. And, and all of that. Well, Charlie, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk to you over the year that you're, that you're voting um, okay. and come back. And you didn't do it. It's uh, just 78. You're still, uh, uh, you know, well, okay. 22 short. Back to you guys, Bill and Kelly. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we can move it along here. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, President Evans. Uh, let's get reaction to what's going on right now. Jim Bianco from Bianco Research and Peter Bookvar, CNBC contributor from the Lindsay Group. Hi, guys. Happy Friday. So, Peter Bookvar, uh, here we are on the threshold of this milestone for the Dow. What, uh, what's going through your mind right now? Well, it's, it's certainly historic, and for those long stocks, uh, you can be happy about it. Uh, but being at 20,000 doesn't tell us anything about where we go from here. We've had a great run since the election, of course, but I think there are a lot of details that need to go, people need to go through uh, after Trump is inaugurated. In What's terms your of, biggest, what are your biggest questions right now? Well, my biggest concern is the global bond markets. I'm of the belief that it's the biggest bubble we've ever seen, and that is now beginning to leak air. And to think that some tax cuts and some regulatory uh, release is somehow going to overcome uh, a rise in interest rates, not just here but globally, and we can somehow skate by that, 
I, I, I'm not a believer of that. I think valuations are egregiously um, overvalued in, uh, in stocks, and a rise in interest rates and overvalued markets is okay. typically not a good combination. Jim, what about you here? I mean, what do you, what's just going through your mind when you see us getting within, you know, less than a point away from Dow 20,000? You know, that the, the economy seems to be reflating. And I guess the question that I've had since the election is, what's reflating? Is it real growth that's reflating? If that's the case, that would bring us earnings, that would bring us jobs, that would be bullish for risk assets like stocks. But if it's inflation that is reflating, that historically has not been good for stocks. Now, what's been happening since the election and the precipice of Dow 20,000 is the bond market, if you deconstruct it, seems to be, as Peter said, leaking air because it's worried about inflation. The stock market seems to be rallying because it thinks we're going to have real growth. So they're not in agreement with each other. Now, in the last 15 years, this has happened before. More times than not, it tends to be the bond market that seems to have the right way on the market. Famously, it was 2007 when yields were plunging, stocks were making a new high. Right. Everybody said, don't worry about it. Then 2008 happened. It, so if this continues, I think it's, it, inflation is the problem. We could be in a, for a nasty surprise in 2017. Interesting. Both of you, as, as the stock market moves higher, you both have your eyes on the bond market. So, uh, Peter Bookvar, your, your fear is that we don't see a gradual rise or normalization, as some like to say euphemistically, a gradual rise in interest rates. Your fear is that people will try and exit at the, at, at the same time, pushing rates uh, at, the, uh, you know, at a great rate, which could cramp out the, the stock market. What would cause that, though? What would be the catalyst for everybody to want to get out of bonds at the same time? Well, it's a combination of things. We're running into, in my opinion, the last inning of global quantitative easing. Japan's already reached their limits. As of April, the ECB is going to be cutting their monthly purchases by 25%. And now you have German inflation running hotter than expected. And you're going to see a big conflict between uh, those two, the ECB and the Bundesbank. You have foreign selling of U.S. Treasuries that's been pretty uh, extreme. You have fiscal kerosene on an economy that's essentially at full employment. You have, as Jim mentioned, potentially rising interest rates. Right, right. So, it's amazing the psychology in markets. For the past six years, what worked was slow growth, QE, and zero interest rates. Okay. And now what they want to work is faster growth, no QE, and rising interest rates. Now, I wonder if you ask most people, you could have fast economic growth or a rising stock market. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, we won't have to ask the question. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, uh, heading to the closer with 37 minutes left. The Dow is up 81 points. If you missed it earlier in the day, we came within 0.37 of Dow 20,000. Hasn't happened yet, though. Do I have my nickel? Uh, anyway. We'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah, we will. Yes. The March to Dow 20,000 is on. We've got two money managers to debate which stocks are still worth owning. And it's more than coincidence that the markets have been on fire since the day after the election. Just ahead, we'll look at the market roll since Donald Trump's victory. Stay tuned.